So we finished getting the mesh as close as possible from the concept art. And now, since the character is going to be dressed, we're going to start focusing on the head. So the first step is to UV map the head. Since we're going to be working with head brush, we want to bake normal maps and any other kind of stuff. And it's always useful to start with the unwrapped head. So the first step we're going to do is we'll prepare all the parts and start reassembling the head. So I've saved the UV layout I had, the original one, and I'm going to start using different UV tools to lay out the head as good as possible. So since nowadays it's very easy to bake the detail of the mesh when you're painting, the, the most important thing when UV doubling a head is to make sure that you have enough space for every single face. So on this video, while I unwrap, I'm going to focus more in making sure each vertex, its face has enough space, enough space for a good pixel density, rather than making sure the layout is as square as possible. Of course, I'll take that into account too. So the first step, I'm trying to start relaxing the parts and preparing them. Since this UV layout has changed a lot, I'm trying to make it match the original as much as possible. I'm relaxing the parts and preparing the symmetry area since the center will be symmetrical. Uh, so I keep relaxing and adapting the mesh. At this point, I'm not really worried about making sure that if I put a checker pattern, everything matches. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best size for the head to have in terms of using the square area. So since I had the jaw detached, I'm creating some room to place the jaw and make sure everything matches. You can see there's a lot of pinching on the corners of the mouth that will have to be fixed later. So right now it's getting the global shape of the head as good as possible. So I've got a couple of shortcuts that I'm using. I'm using one for relax, even though it doesn't work very well. Sometimes it just doesn't relax. And I'm using another one for stitching, so it saves me some time when stitching parts together. So now connecting the jaw to the rest of the body and relaxing the other areas, saving the work while I do it. Now I need to make sure that the whole head fits well together, so it's always good to compare the mesh with the UV layout to make sure the areas you leave open actually match the original. So now we relax the UV and we go. Since this is a very low res mesh, it's important to know that like some parts, it's very good to go there and manually move point by point to make sure it's at the exact perfect spot. Also, if you follow the line flow, you'll see the areas I'm working on. So you can see where the jaw is, where the back of the head is, and you can have a very good idea of what each point corresponds. Now I'm going to check the hairline where it is to make sure where I have to to mix the mesh. So you can see that the stitching is up to a point where it won't be seen once it starts to separate because the hair shows up. Now I'm aligning the structure of the eye, so I'll see a front view to make sure the eye is as close as possible to the front view. Then fix the global shape of the mesh. I want to give more space to the front of the head and less space to the back since you probably have more detail and the hair is going to cover half the back of the head. 
So in terms of proportions, the head will probably have less 10% than what it should, which will give more room to the front. Now this is quite important. I'm fixing the UV on the lips. So the first ring is the inside of the mouth, which we won't see. So that can be quite small. And then all the subsequent rings are forming the outside of the lips. So I have to make sure there's enough room for everything. And thinking the character might open his mouth later on. Also, when we go and bake the normal maps and any diffuse we want to do, we're going to close his eyes and close his and open his mouth slightly so we get a nice curve on the edge of the lips. Now I'm trying to see how the head will fit on the square shape. I also have to not forget that we'll need room for the eyes for the ears, the inside of the mouth. So probably on the top right and top left corner is where I'm going to place them. So now the head starts to resemble more what it will be. Some more relaxing and working on the corner of the mouth. This is a very important area. Relax by center sometimes helps. This is usually quite tricky trying to find the best the best shape. It takes time, but this will really pay off later on. So it's worth spending some time here and be relaxed while doing it because everything else is gonna be made on top of this. So once I have a solid layout that I'm pleased with in terms of spacing and scale. I'll do an overall moving of the shapes to make sure that the crucial areas are correctly mapped in terms of scale. For example, if you look at the corner of the lips, you can see the stretching that I'm trying to fix now. It's very, very big. So this stretching will have to be fixed later on once we start to put a checker pattern on the, on the face. Also notice how the nose is stretched compared to the to the model, which is something that will be very obvious once we do some symmetry on the mesh. And now I'm going to work on the eye. So I've separated the eye because the eye is so important it will need its own space to work. So the first thing is the eye is going to be closed. So I have enough resolution. So when the eye closes, we have good detail. So we're going to close the eyelid as close as possible, similar to the mouth, and then spread out the space between all the corners so there's enough room to paint any details that we might need. So first I'm getting the shape, a very solid close shape. Notice how the edge loops match from top to bottom, so it makes a really nice curve. And now I can constrain the edges, keep the boundary points fixed, and start pulling the sides. So this is a bit of manual work, and relax by centers. And also use some soft selection. It's important to try to get this as uniform as possible, even if it doesn't match the mesh. It will be moving all the time because it's a human head, so it really doesn't have to match what we have right now, since there will be extremes all the time. You just need to find the balance and in between that helps everything. Now I want to make sure that there's enough room for the upper and lower lid, since they're so important. So I'm spreading out all the edges so I can create enough room for the lid. Using soft selection, it's quite quick. And now I place the eye inside the head. So I try to match the shape. I don't want to distort the eye very much. And then I'll start stitching all the sides. And now I can fix the connection between the eyebrows 
and the eye area and the nose and the eye area since everything is stitched together.